Nice. This is my number one. The parents, parents marches. Yeah. I want to have a big shout out to all the parents and non-parents, all the people who came out this year to protect children from the encroaching of this stuff in schools. Uh, pe people came out en masse, uh, en masse throughout the summer, really. It seems to me that, yeah, it was really encouraging. So many people were willing to stick their head up. So many people I met said they'd never been to a protest before. It was their uh -huh. first one, that they really felt that they had to say something even if they didn't have children themselves. So shout out to everybody who decided to attend a, a march or a protest this summer. Well done. I'm very proud of you. This is my number one. Yeah, we were talking before, Melanie, about your experience. And, and I'm trying to remember if it was this June the 9th experience. It about was. the difference between how the media was portraying things yes. on the ground and what, what was actually happening. So it was, it well, was this one. Up. Yeah. So June 9th for me really was my coming out. This is story time for me. I got to a point where... <laughs> I felt I had to do something. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I'd noticed since, oh gosh, I think it must have been April, that there was this protest in Ottawa. And I was like, Ottawa is not that far. Should I just go? I don't know anybody. What am I going to do? And a lot of internal wrestling. What if I'm outed? What if my child knows? What if, what if a lot of, there's just a lot of what ifs, a lot of concerns, a lot of worries. And then I nearly didn't go because I was like, oh, I can't really justify it. I made up all kinds of excuses. And the night before I was like, sod it. I got into my car, I rented like the cheapest place I could find, and I just drove to Ottawa and I and I and I had a great time. You know, I went to the first friendly face that I met who happened to be Blueprint for Canada. Cheers, how's it going? Uh, and then I met a whole group of people that I've been working with so far. So it was a really great experience. But what I did notice is my experience at the protest was these were people who were genuinely concerned. There were some things at that, that protest that I that I wasn't so keen on seeing. Um, it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the experience that was presented to me uh, through some of the things that I'd been reading about. The trans activists were as crazy as I'd expected, if I'm going to be really honest. But the actual parents, no, it's very different kettle of fish. But afterwards, yes. So the media, there was actually quite a bit of media about this particular protest after June 9th. And it was very distorted. Not all of it. Some of it was pretty reflective of what was happening. But I noticed uh, uh, that the media, it, depending on, I guess, the political leaning, some of it seemed pretty fair and what I'd experienced. And other ones, which is, I guess, the CBC and like the legacy media, were lies. They were not at all what I saw. They were very ill-informed. I knew that there were lies in the media. I knew there was bias in the media. But it was my the first time that I had experienced that firsthand. And I and it really woke me up to really what's going on with journalism and how far behind journalism has fell in terms of ethics and its duty to the public. But, you know, if you've been through it and you see that this happens, and I think a lot of people experience that on the million marches, that same awakening as to yeah. what's going on with our media here in Canada, for me, it energized me. I think it gave me even more of a purpose to do things like having this channel or having this uh, podcast with you, Shannon, just making sure that we can bring out as much of the things that are going on as possible to people, right? Because uh, we can't necessarily trust our media and do uh, try to do a decent job while doing it as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think that, okay, so this was September the 20th on Parliament Hill. I did some live streaming uh, on my Twitter uh, while I was there, talking to lots of people. Uh, people came from all over. I, there was Gosh, I don't think 10,000 was a out of the realm estimate of the crowd size here. This is it was huge. Uh, on, it huge. on Wellington Street. We are blocks and blocks of people on the street between the basically on the sidewalk and the gate and the fence that is around Parliament Hill. And then there are thousands of more people up on the on the lawn, the parliamentary lawn. So we assembled here on Parliament Hill. And easily, I mean, eight to 10 times the number of people on this side of the protest than on the other rainbow side of the protest. <laughs> and the protesters there were led by Fred Hahn and uh, Jagmeet Singh and a bunch of the usual Ottawa suspects uh, who were out. And, and I, got, uh, I got some heckling uh, on my way, which was kind of fun. I want to underline the craziness that our, the deputy, is it deputy prime minister? Is that what they're called? Is that what Jack Singh is called? No, he'd be, he's not It'd even be, a leader of the opposition. He's, he's a leader of the NDP party. 
So they're a coalition. But the point is, I mean, there's a pretty important guy. He's a pretty influential guy. You know, he's a he's a mover and a shaker in the politics here in Canada. But the fact that this leader, this 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 party leader that is in cahoots in leading the country currently is at a protest against regular everyday citizens on the side of the 17 percent of those zealous activists. That to yeah. me is beyond insane. And it, I cannot believe that stuff like that does not get more coverage. It didn't get international coverage, that specific aspect. Not really, not that I remember. And to me, that was mm -hmm. insane. Because imagine that happening 10 years ago, like it, unreal, unreal. Yeah, it was a very surreal experience watching uh, Jagmeet Singh behind those uh, banners, yeah. basically calling yeah. parents and regular citizens. These were normal, regular people coming out saying, please don't sexualize childhood. And yeah. they were being denounced by, uh, by Jagmeet Singh. The, uh, it still shocks me. Uh, I mean, th that was one of the experiences that I had a couple of years ago. So uh, just jumping back here, this is you and, and Billboard Chris and uh, Chris Dacey in the red hat. Uh, Dacey has a uh, sort of a, a platform. No, that's, a good, that's not Chris Dacey. That is, oh, oh what's is his that? name? I think his name is Brett. Brett. I Brett. think he's a Freedom Convoy person. I I think. Yeah, yeah. he's from the Maritimes. Kind of he's like got a, he's not. Yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got a good sized following. Of course, there's you, um, and and the three of you and, and the group behind you are walking down the same street that uh, Chris and Chanel Fall and I walked down in 2021. And you talk about these political leaders uh, mobilizing, you know, like Jagmeet Singh. Well, we had Joel Harden. Oh the, yes. <laughs> Right, Joel Harden is a member of provincial parliament here in Ottawa. This is was in his riding where this protest took place. Uh, Joel Harden, we had uh, Catherine McKenney, they them uh, from uh, it was Ottawa the case City of Councilor. The punch. Yeah, well, there was a, this was the June 9th, but in 2021 at the same location, um, these political actors mobilized their constituents and used their platforms. Uh, to leverage media to bring out hundreds of people to protest uh, and intimidate three of us. Uh, I, it's it's a as far as I'm concerned, it's a, a kind of a gross abuse of of their power. It, well, it's politic uh, politicians acting against their own citizens. That's what gets me right. Uh -huh. It's already kind of weird that you have politicians protesting. Period about anything, but but to do it against your own citizens, the utter brashness, the the. I, I cannot even put in words how I feel about how immoral, I, unethical that yeah. really is. I think it shows a true disdain for your own citizens that you happen to disagree with, that you're willing to do that. I think it shows poor leadership. I think it shows poor moral compass, frankly. We still get some of these arguments about Pierre Polyev, and uh, someone tried this on me uh, recently, while he was out there talking to the truckers. Like, he's a political leader. He might not agree with everybody that he talks to, but it's his well, job a to talk between to, people. to people and protesting against them. I think there's a difference. Right. Now, I'm not a supporter of Polyev. I'm not a hater of Polyev. Uh, I'm sort of indifferent on this person. But there is a difference between having conversations and trying to understand where people are coming from and picketing them, actually actively right. picketing them uh -huh. to me. Well, these zealous activists obviously feel that it's it's completely inappropriate if you don't agree with somebody yeah. for a politician to even talk to them. So we're yeah. gonna we're gonna disenfranchise uh, constituents in Canada because they have different political views than us. I, yeah. I'm, it's we're we're in a mess. Well, they're telling you that they're not going to listen to you. We're absolutely not going to listen to you. We don't care about what you say. In fact, we're going to actively try to uh, use tactics against you. Politicians saying that. Anyway, again, in a whole other conversation for another time. I'm sure we could talk about this a long time <laughs> about issues around protesting citizens Spe within their own country. Speaking of of Pierre Polyev. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an eye-opening year for sure. Click on one of these suggestions for some other stories in the gender landscape in Canada. Hope you like them.